to uh, deal with this. Uh, so there is a bit of a frustration in uh, seeing and understanding the problem and getting people to uh, take actions that can help uh, reduce this problem. What about talking to the companies that are directly part of the grid to spokes on a wheel where each company has their spokes and they actually start provisioning for this? We we have uh, started that dialogue, in fact, uh, with the uh, people, the organizations that own and operate the uh, power grid. Uh, we had a major uh, conference uh, to discuss this back in uh, November of uh, last year. Uh, we're planning a new uh, conference uh, in the next few months to uh, talk about it some more. Uh, I, I think uh, all of their uh, concerns, of course, go to, well, uh, how can this be uh, funded? Uh, where would the funds come from to pay for this uh, hardening? Uh, they have to go to their state commissions to get uh, approval for making these sort of investments or expenditures. Are you uh, the serious? The federal government has not stepped forward with any funding assistance, uh, even though arguably if the issue is to defend, you know, defend us against nuclear attack, that probably is a federal government responsibility. Uh, you know, the, the power grid operators, uh, you know, they understand, while they might understand the nature and new dynamic of the uh, threat here, they have traditionally not been ever... Uh, expected to act as war fighters uh, in uh, regards to uh, defense of the uh, country. Uh, so that's a new role uh, that would be uh, imposed upon them, especially in defending against the EMP uh, type of attack. Now, in the case of naturally occurring geomagnetic storms, uh, one could argue that they should have been prepared uh, and should not have allowed their systems to ever have uh, uh, progressed in a way that uh, introduced this vulnerability. I mean, essentially what I've told people in the power industry and people in the government is that this threat of geomagnetic storms is arguably an un has been an unrecognized systemic risk uh, to society. Now, part of the reasons for that is that, uh, again, the federal government has probably played an unhelpful uh, role in uh, educating the uh, power industry about geomagnetic storms. We did not know until just a few years ago how severe these geomagnetic storms uh, could be. And in fact, the uh, NOAA had been uh, supplying power industry with uh, information on geomagnetic storms that has been somewhat misleading uh, and, and it has not communicated well to them the real risks of these rare but extreme events uh, that uh, uh, could be quite harmful uh, to their infrastructure and to society as a whole. So uh, we've had some learning lessons uh, uh, from that that uh, uh, have been contributing factors in how we've got into this situation. I remember some years ago doing a show with Dr. Carol Rosen when we had a conversation about outer space and the fact that we all live on this planet like it's this closed system. We're in and on this planet and that's what there is. And so Many of us are mired in our day-to-day -day lives and in our own personal microcosm of life, right. and we forget that we actually live in outer space, but on Earth. Yeah, and, and that and, that and the I ecosystem guess we're doesn't, you know, that, uh, uh, big, uh, you know, big asteroids don't hit us uh, more often than they do. Uh, you know, uh, the last uh, really big one was uh, 65 million years ago, and hopefully it'll be another. 65 million years or more before the next big one occurs. In the case of geomagnetic storms, however, these are 
quite frequent events. They're likely to occur within your or my uh, lifetime. And what is the impact of that? Give an example. Some people say we're in a solar cycle where the sunspots are inactive and therefore there is this potential for flares and flares impacting our magnetosphere and our poles. Is that true? Well, uh, the current sunspot cycle that we're just starting into now is projected to be uh, a somewhat below average uh, sunspot cycle as far as frequency of uh, spots that occur on the uh, surface of the sun. Uh, That probably doesn't mean anything, though, in terms of, uh, of what we can expect for violent events uh, from the sun. Uh, For example, we've had some very big uh, storms that have occurred uh, like in 1921, 1909, 1859 that were quite violent uh, storms and are the storms that we're uh, concerned about reoccurring again today. Uh, These all occurred during sunspot cycles somewhat uh, similar to what we expect to unfold over the next uh, 10, 11 years here. Uh, These these were below average uh, sunspot cycles as far as uh, 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 those that that ranking is uh, uh, rated, but they produced unusually large uh, storms. Now, John, just one quick question. Large high-voltage power grids have only existed for the last uh, 40, 50 years in in a size that uh, could couple with these big storms. So we have haven't experienced a big storm on today's infrastructure. So quick question. I just want to go back to something you said. You talked about storms that we expect to unfold. Why do we expect them to unfold well, uh, they have occurred before. They will occur again. The sun naturally produces these events. Uh, it produces large flare events, large coronal mass eruptions uh, that send out plasma uh, from the sun. Uh, we uh, have uh, observed it uh, uh, in increasingly uh, good resolution or detail in uh, modern eras, and uh, we can use some of that knowledge of our observations in modern eras eras, to take a look backwards at uh, storm events as well and uh, calibrate those to understand how big those uh, older storm events were so that we can develop a baseline for uh, making uh, extrapolations about the frequency and severity of uh, these uh, historically large uh, storms. It was said some time ago that NASA had discovered that our magnetosphere has some type of obtrusion or a hole in it, and that also adds to the vulnerability should we have a coronal mass ejection and some type of solar storm. Is that correct? Is that actually well, that's, verified? That's true. They've, they've found these events where uh, the plasma from the sun can enter the magnetosphere on the day side. Uh, it's called a flux uh, transfer event. Uh, we, we hadn't scientifically understood that process until we re- have more recently measured it. Uh, arguably, it's been occurring all along. Uh, it hasn't just started occurring only because we just discovered it. So, uh, uh, Does that concern you? Well, uh, I think we have seen some of these events uh, in the modern era. Uh, there was a, a storm, I recall, that had widespread power uh, system impacts, at least in small scale, across the entire U.S. back in October 28, 1991, and we couldn't explain why that storm occurred the way it did until uh, the recent discovery of uh, the uh, flux transfer events. So now we can put some perspective on why and uh, how this storm occurred 
you know, uh, twenty almost twenty years ago that uh, are explained by more uh, uh, better.